So one of the most important components to blockchain is this idea of group consensus. Um, as we talked about in an earlier module, blockchain is inherently a very inefficient system. We're asking multiple nodes, sometimes tens of thousands of computer nodes, to all repeat the same work. They're all keeping a copy of the same data. And the reason we agree to this tremendous inefficiency is because if we can get all or most of those nodes to agree on what the truth is, we can have a lot of trust that that's actually the truth, that that record hasn't been tampered or altered or changed in any way. Um, so consensus is one of the underpinnings of blockchain. And there are several different methods we use right now to uh, have all these nodes reach consensus. Essentially when we talk about consensus, you can think of every block in a blockchain as being like a sheet of paper. It's got a fixed amount of space, we write a transaction on every line, and when that sheet of paper is full, it's important that we all as a group come together and compare our different sheets and select the sheet or the version of paper that the majority agree with. And so there are several different methods that we use to come to consensus on a block. Um, the oldest and most widespread method is what's called proof of work. And you'll see in another module we actually dive into proof of work hands on and show you uh, live what proof of work looks like and how it actually works. Um, proof of work has served us well for the past nine, almost ten years, got its start in Bitcoin, and it's used in every major public and most private blockchain offerings. <clears throat> but we're also starting to see some of the limitations of proof of work. One of the big limitations behind proof of work right now is how big and how fast it can scale. Currently on proof of work blockchains, we're able to process somewhere between 50 and 20 transactions worldwide per second, which may sound like a lot until you realize that modern payment processing networks like Visa's can scale up to over 70,000 transactions a second. So in order to compete with conventional technology, blockchain really needs to add a few more orders of magnitude to that uh, transaction rate. And there are many proposed alternative consensus methods for how we might be able to reach that kind of scale. Um, there are things in production right now like Tangle, which use a blockless solution. And there are also new and emerging consensus methods like proof of stake or proof of activity that we're currently examining that take the work out of proof of work. We also have another module in this course where we talk about proof of stake and yet another one where we compare proof of work versus proof of stake. So if you're curious about any of the details of how these consensus mechanisms are actually implemented, be sure to check out those modules. Uh, but the takeaway point to understand is that it's this consensus. It is this idea of asking all of these nodes, potentially tens of thousands of nodes, to all repeat the same work and then periodically come together and agree on whatever the majority select the right version of the truth to be that gives blockchain that high level of trust and that makes it such a secure record store.